Hello and welcome back to the Dandelion Diaries. Today I have another ink exploration and I was going to do my blue blacks but I decided to do grays just because I feel like it's more fun to go in the order of the rainbow so I'll be doing black to gray. Um, for supplies I have my Hobonichi A5 Yamazakura notebook. This has 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. I have all of the ink samples I'm gonna be doing. I have no bottles today, just samples. And this is a sample rack from Pen Chalet. I do have a $10 off for them for your first order in the description if you're interested. I have my eyedropper, water, the condiment cup that I definitely have loved using so far. So thank you, Leanne, for this idea. And then I have my glass dip pen by J. Airbon. This is a little cat chopstick rest that I got from Daiso, but I don't know if I'm gonna use it. I just like having it here because it's cute. But let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start off with basically all of the grays that seem most gray to me. Some of them do have a few properties that are a little bit more interesting, but we'll get to those in a minute. The first sample I'm gonna be doing is Noodler's Lexington Gray. And I do have a kind of pet peeve with Noodlers, and that is all of their inks have a scent. And it's a very chemical smell to me. I don't necessarily like it <laughs> at all. I don't have a single full bottle of Noodlers ink because I don't like the smell. But I will say for a range of colors and for the price that they have, it is really nice to have so many options from Noodlers. So once again, this one is called Lexington Gray. So Lexington Gray is a very wet gray ink. And you can kind of see that as I write with the glass dip, ben, glass dip pen. It very much is a pretty medium gray. It doesn't really lean warm or cool to me. It is just a gray. It does have some nice shading properties but overall it's not super exciting. If you were looking for just a really nice wet gray ink, this would probably be my choice. Even though I don't like the smell. <laughs> the next sample I have here is Diamine's Earl Gray. And I really like this gray. And I might be partial to Diamine inks just because again, they have so many colors to choose from. And I really like my Diamine Onyx Black. But this gray ink is just what I imagine what Earl Grey tea looks like if it had to be a color. And obviously Earl Grey tea is not gray when you brew it. It is definitely a normal tea color. But it has a beautiful kind of lavender almost tint to it. And I really like the way that it looks on the page. The next ink sample I have is the only shimmering sample in the group, and that is Ferris Wheel Press's April Showers. And I actually really like this color. My only downside is it is shimmery. And so I wish I, wish I could have this in a non-shimmer because the color of this gray is what I imagine gray to be the most like. It really does look like a storm cloud. It is just very much a beautiful medium toned gray. I have no problem with shimmer inks. I actually have quite a few shimmer inks in my collection. I just wish that if I could have a gray color, it would be this color and it would be non shimmery. The next gray ink I have is by a brand called Three Oysters, and this one is called Doldum or Daldum, not really sure on pronunciation, but it is very much a warm gray, and I feel like if you're going to be having a collection of grays to choose from, we have to include all of the ranges from medium to cool to lavender to warm and all of the above. This one honestly is a really nice warm gray that just it reminds me of like that cozy sweater that you would wear in this in the fall or the winter times and it just keeps you nice and cozy i actually don't have a lot of three oysters ink and would love to try more of them i just haven't had the chance 
Next is kind of a lavender gray. This is Ferris Wheel Press's Madame Mulberry, and I have it in the Ink Charger set collection. Um, I actually got it with the other ones as well, but I put the April showers in a vial because it was way too hard to get the shimmer out of it. The only downside to the chargers from Ferris Wheel Press is the size of the bottles. The neck of the bottle is literally so small I can hardly fit the dropper in and you'll see as I put the glass dip pen in it it is incredibly difficult to get any kind of ink on that pen. But Madame Mulberry is very much a very light lavender gray but it shades so beautifully and that it almost has a like a I don't know, like a, a softness to it is the best way I can put it. It's really quite interesting as it dries. This ink is incredibly light when it's dried, so I wouldn't necessarily think it'd be good for writing with, but like most Ferris Wheel Press inks, you can paint with them and do any kind of artistry, and I think it would be really cool to do kind of like a light gray wash on one of your drawings if you were to use this ink that way. Next on our list is a Le Bon ink. This is from their mythology line. It is called Athena Gray. And I honestly wasn't going to purchase any of the mythology line because I didn't think I needed any more ink samples, right? But I have a dog and her name is Athena. And I also have a dog named Apollo. And most of our animals are actually named after Greek mythology. So I, I just had to see what all the fuss was about when it came to the mythology inks. And let me tell you, these things are incredibly pigmented and absolutely gorgeous. Out of all the grays that I swatched today, I'd have to say that this one is probably my favorite because it's super rich and it's really vibrant and it's pigmented and it has a sheen as well. There was one ink from the Le Bon Mythology line that I was not able to sample, and that was the Aphrodite. So if you are in, in cahoots with somebody who has the Aphrodite ink sample and would love to send me a sample, please send me an email. Um, it is in my YouTube description. I absolutely would love to get my hands on an Aphrodite pink sample. Next on the list is part of the Pilot Iroshizuku inks. This is Kiri Same. I actually have two inks from the Pilot Iroshizuku line that are more gray to me than any other color, so I wanted to include them. So Kirisame is very much a cool medium gray, and it actually means scotch mist, which I think is really interesting because it does kind of look like a misty color. And the other ink from the Pilot Iroshizuku Pilot Iroshizuku line that I believe is more gray is the Fuyu Shiogun. And you'll see here in comparison to the Kirisame, it is actually very much different, even though I consider them both a gray. This one is actually called this one is actually called Rigor of Winter. And it, do, it does look a lot more blue than gray in some points, but when it dries, it has this kind of gray shading to it. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it is very much a wintry gray, in my opinion. The next gray ink sample I have is by a company called Papier Plume. And this one is Oyster Gray. I, this is my only ink from this company, so if you know where I can get some more samples from them, I would love to know. This is a sample from Vanessa. Um, I seem to find all of the kind of interesting, unique ink brands at Vanessa. They, they have way more samples than any other company I have ever looked at. I'm not affiliated with Vanessa, but I absolutely love their little stationery store. And they are located in the U.S. and Arkansas, so their shipping times are absolutely fabulous. I usually get my stuff within a couple of days, which is pretty remarkable. But Oyster Gray definitely reminds me of an oyster shell. It is this medium cool gray that reminds me of the ocean. And honestly, when it shades, it is absolutely gorgeous. And it almost has kind of like a an oceanic depth to it, in my opinion. It, it definitely is a good name for this gray. 
And the last gray that I have was a sample that I got as a surprise me sample from Goulet Pens, and it is Diatrementis Document Fog Gray. And when I first swatched this, I was shocked because it is not a gray to me. It is very much blue. But as it shades, it almost has this kind of like cool gray color to it. And I, I mean, gray's in the name, so I'm going to include it in the gray ink swatches. But I just, this ink was very surprising to me when I first got it. And definitely a good choice for a surprise me ink from Goulet Pens. But as you can see, it is very blue compared to anything else on the page. And it just has this almost storm cloud look to it. And I know it's called fog gray, but I think it should be called storm cloud gray. And one thing I have learned with Diatrementis inks, which I wholeheartedly love, is they are also very wet. So if I were to pick between brands of the Noodlers or Diatrementis, I would 100% go with Diatrementis just because they don't have that chemical smell to them. And I feel like the quality of the ink is a lot different in a writing, like writing with a pen, than it is with using the Noodlers inks. No hate towards Noodlers though, I really do love their variety of colors and that they have so many different options in a great price range. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry and then I will come back and show you guys what they look like after they have dried to the paper and we'll go over some of the cool properties that each of the inks have. Okay, so the inks have mostly dried. The last two left to dry are the Oyster Gray by Papier Plume and then the Diatrementis Document Fog Gray. I'm gonna go ahead and take my clips off so I can show you guys kind of up close how they've been shading and sheeting. It is honestly really cool to see the various shades of gray. Um, I'd probably say the grayest one of all is definitely the Lexington gray. This is what gray looks like to me, but the rest of them are very, very interesting. So starting with Lexington gray um, by Noodlers, it is pretty much a flat gray, medium gray. There's not really a cool or warm tone to it. It's just gray. It is a very wet ink. It is still drying and it was the very first swatch I did. As for the shading properties, it doesn't really shade to me, not like some of the others on this page, but it is just a really nice regular gray. Moving on to the Diamine Earl Gray. This is one of my favorites. It is definitely, like I said, it reminds me of Earl Gray tea to the T. Um, it has this beautiful kind of like black navy shading and it is more of a lavender gray color. It is absolutely stunning. For the Ferris Wheel Press April Showers, this definitely is a kind of a cooler stormy gray color. If, it ha if you can tell, it has a very mild silver shimmer to it. It is the only shimmer ink that I did. And it is kind of cool to watch it shade to that dark navy. But as for writing with it, it is very dry. Um, so if you were to put this in a pen, just make sure it is a very wet flowing pen. It's very common for a Ferris wheel press to have dry inks in my opinion. Next is the Three Oysters Dolum, which is pretty much the warmest gray on the pages. I absolutely love this gray. It has almost like a yellow shade to it. It is so interesting and I haven't inked it in the pen yet, but I'm really excited to. And I'm also really excited to try to get to more, get more samples from Three Oysters because they're just such a cool ink brand. Then we have Madame Mulberry, also by Ferris Wheel Press. And as you can see, it's shaded so cool um it's like purple it's blue it's gray it's it's all of the above but it is very very light when you write with it almost illegibly in my opinion and if I were to use this ink I would probably like I said use it as a wash for any kind of painting or any kind of artistry Moving on to the other side of the page, at the top here we have the Le Bon Mythology Athena Gray, which is still my favorite of all of the grays, just because it is so pigmented. And if I were to write with it, it does look a little bit more of like a gray black 
So it's, it's more of a muted black in my opinion. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's very mild, but it is very subtly kind of a reddish black sheen and it writes just beautifully. I, I would love to, to get my hands on some of the other uh, colors in this line just because it is such an interesting ink. Then we have the Pilot Iroshi Zuku inks. Again, they are both gray to me. One's more blue and one is more warm. I, I love both of them. Pilot inks, especially the Hiroshi Zuko inks, always behave so well. They're always very wet flowing to me, but not overly wet, and they just have this beautiful shade property. Neither of these inks sheen to me, um, at least not on this paper, and both of them are very unique in their own way, but they are very similar as well. Then we have the Paper Plume Oyster Gray, which is still a little bit wet, but it is, like I said, it reminds me of just the depth of the ocean. It is such a cool blue gray. I, yeah, I want to try more from more samples from that ink brand as well. And then finally, we have the Diatrementis Document Fog Gray, which is probably the most blue out of everything. Like I said, it is more of a blue ink to me than a gray, but because it says gray in the name, I am including it but it shades to this dark navy color. It is still a little bit wet, but it's such an interesting ink because is it gray? Is it blue? As in the writing sample, you can see it's kind of a little bit of both. So maybe that's why it's more gray than blue in some instances, but I still think it's more blue than gray in most instances. <laughs> But let me know which one was your favorite in the comments and also let me know which colors you want me to do next. I've been kind of going in a little bit of rainbow order. So we have blacks first, now grays. So next I could either do blues or I could start with yellows. I mean, the options are endless. So let me know what you want to see next in the comments. But thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more content from me, I do have an Instagram. I will leave my handle on the screen. I do post there pretty regularly and I have been posting ink swatches there as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.